So just before we join the video, I just wanted to explain that this is not a comparison, uh, a detailed comparison between the two cameras. It's purely a look at a comparison of the JPEGs straight out of camera. So we'll see them at the end. Right now we'll join the video, which is kind of a beginner's workshop as well. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Hey up, and uh, you might recognize this backdrop. Uh, we've come to the Peak District, as we said, and uh, this is Lady Bower Reservoir. So we've come to the Derwent Valley Dams, and uh, we're gonna test these two cameras out and do the comparison here. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is, uh, is get set up. Oh, I need paying as well, because this is a proper workshop, so it's not free. He's been saving his spending money up, so we need to see the readies. Right. So let's get set up. Right, so set your tripod up so it looks like this. Try and get to the same height. Don't tack all day. That's going to blow away. Is it two legs that you did? All legs. Now move the, cam move the tripod close to this one here, look. Okay. Closer. Really close like that because we're going to take the cam set the camera up so they're both taking the same picture looking that way. Oh. Right, so look here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a picture of this. See the pipe, mm. the big pipeline that's taking water to Sheffield. What so we, pipe? Pipe oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we want to take a picture of that, right, with the background. So I'm going to set my camera up first and then I want you to look on my screen and copy what's on my screen. So what you need to do here is make your image look the same as mine look. So can you see, so you've got to zoom in a little. Don't move the camera around, just zoom in a little. Right, so let's take the picture then, get ready to press the shutter. Two second timer. Yep. Okay. You can make it look clear. Should I take it? Okay, ready, steady, go. It's fairly similar, isn't it? That's just a bit brighter. Mm, quite it will be. No, I don't want to make it darker, do I? Yeah. Let's make it a bit darker then. I don't know why that keeps going automatically darker. Take another one. No. It on two seconds? Yeah, it's already on two seconds. It's not. You, can just, yeah. you have to do it again. You have to do it every time? Yeah. Now, if you look now, they're quite similar, aren't they? Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so that's the first one. So we want to try and do now is find another one. Okay, second composition now, and it's uh, still raining. And in this second one, we're just introducing a little bit of foreground. So we've put a tree on the left-hand side of the image, still with the reservoir on the right, and then we've got the pipeline going on the background. And we've set the two screens up, looking uh, exactly the same. So uh, we're going to take the shot now. Two second timer. Right. So this shot, we haven't just got a plain picture. That's called foreground. Mm. So that's putting interest into the picture because the previous shot, which was just this, was 
boring. Mm. There's yeah. nothing in it. But mm. now we've got this one, it's it more it interesting. A lot better. So the next shot, we're going to, need to walk somewhere else, probably further over there, to get something even more interesting. Mm. <laughs> Okay, that's the third shot done. So we'll show you these three comparisons later in the video. What we're gonna do now is let uh, Miles go and take his own pictures based on what he's learnt from taking these first three. So uh, we're gonna have a bite of breakfast now, I think, before we, we do the next stage. Uh, and it's still raining very heavily. I wouldn't say very heavily. It's... Who asked you? Don't You've got an hour left. What, for what? You've got an hour left of your 60 pound. What is the 60 pound for? To pay me to do this workshop with you. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> set of pictures there for a 10 year old and uh, it looked like he learned something from my little uh, workshop um, however he didn't use the tripod and there's a reason for that because um, he broke it just after we finished filming the the fourth shot um, so I did give him his uh, 60 pound back so he could buy a new tripod okay let's look at the comparison of these shots then so um, here's the first one we took of the pipe the very large pipe. What do you think? Which one's which? Any guesses? Okay, here's the answer. And when you look at all three images in the cold light today on a computer screen. We actually took four images. There's not a lot of difference to the naked eye. 
there's a slight difference in colour rendition. The colours are slightly different, uh, but when you look compare all the, the pictures, the Kodak delivers just as, as acceptable pictures as the Nikon does. The big difference you'll see is here when we do a pixel peep. So as a beginner's camera, the Kodak um, is probably one of many that's suitable for a young beginner to play around with and, and learn the craft of photography. Yes, he did go off and do his own thing. He did some videoing, but that's what we do as photographers. Well, even the older generation, we go around and experiment and, and photograph different things. That's what photography is all about getting out and just pointing that camera and uh, hopefully over time he'll either carry on with his interest in photography or, or he'll lose it and discover girls or football okay here's a preview of our first day uh, on the Northumberland coast and uh, we visit the fishing village of sea houses um, and in the Northumberland videos I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I put compositions together. So uh, here's that quick preview and uh, thank you for watching this video. It was a bit different, it was a bit of fun, but it did sort of have the message and the learning that you don't need um, an expensive camera to get uh, a decent shot. Mm -hmm.